Okay, we'll uh, continue with the Kelvin cycle or the dark reaction, dark cycle of the photosynthesis. So we basically turn solar energy to ATP and NADPH. Now we get to use it. Now CO2 forms the backbone for all sugars from photosynthesis. And the Kelvin cycle is the reaction that uses ATP and NADPH from the light dependent reactions to form the glucose molecules and other carbo carbohydrates. In the uh, energy chart we have seen uh, last week, we are at this producer part right now. So CO2 diffuses through the stomata into the <clears throat> measure field of, this, uh, of the leaf and then into the stroma of the chloroplast. Here's the chloroplast and stroma or is the space that's in here. So Kelvin cycle occurs in stroma, a sugar precursor are made in the stroma using CO2, rubisco enzyme, and ribulose bisphosphonate. And the Kelvin cycle occurs in three stages. First is the fixation. Second is the reduction. Third is the regeneration. And the cycle uses, again, CO2, rubisco, and RUEP. And the CO2 must be taken in from the atmosphere and the ribulose uh, bisphosphate must be affixed to CO2 that's occurring here somewhere. Let me see. And the three carbon, three PGA must be reduced to three G3P and then G six carbon G3P is shuttled out of the uh, Kelvin cycle. And this is the precursor of the glucose. And then afterwards, uh, ri ribulose bisphosphate must be regenerated for the cycle to repeat. So here's the uh, three molecules of uh, ribulose bisphosphate uh, with the rubisco enzyme and three molecules of CO2, carbon becomes fixed. And then you produce six molecules of three PGA. And then three PGA becomes reduced to become G3P, which becomes sugar outside the uh, Kelvin cycle. So fixation step, let's look at that a little more closely. Rubisco catalyzes the reaction between carbon dioxide and ribulose bisphosphate. Here's the Rubisco enzyme here. And here's the three, one molecule of Rubisco or uh, ribulose bisphosphate is shown, but stoichiometrically, three molecule is required to finish the cycle. And here only one molecule of CO2 is shown, but it actually uses three molecule. And this is the carbon fixation step. Rubisco enzyme is fixing, fixing the CO2 onto ribulose bisphosphate. For, and once you do that, you produce a six carbon compound that is immediately converted into two, three carbon compounds or three PGA. It's three PGA shown here. Now, carbon has been fixed because it's been affixed to existing molecule or fixed, or as in fixed from being inorganic CO2 to complex organic molecule. And then reduction step, reduction of 3PGA must occur in order to produce the GA3P or G3P. So any ATP and NADPH is what does that job. That is what reduces the 3GP, 3PGA or 3G, yeah, 3PGA into G3P. G3P and GA3P are the same thing. Uh, how is G3P used in glycolysis? 
G3P turns into P something. Pyruvate? Maybe you should look that up. ATP and ADPH are oxidized to ADP and NADP plus. Um, and the cycle repeats after the reduction in Kelvin cycle in stroma. One of two G3Ps leaves the Kelvin cycle to become eventually six carbon glucose. And this picture really shows six turns of the cycle. It's just combining all turns. And, but only one carbon is fixed at each cycle. Uh, fixing and reducing six G3P to shuttle one G3P out of the chloroplast takes six ATP molecules. How many ATP does it take to make one glucose, just one glucose? You need two G3P, so it'll take 12 ATP and 12 NADPH just to produce one single molecule of sugar. And the other G3P regenerates. And this is the regeneration of ribulose bisphosphate step. Ribulose bisphosphate is a five carbon compound. G3P is three C carbon, three carbon compound. So 15 carbons in five G3P becomes 15 carbon in three molecules of rubisco or ribulose bisphosphate, three molecules. Five molecules of uh, GA3P, three molecules of uh, ribulose bisphosphate. And the CO2 will combine with ribulose bisphosphate to make two, three carbon, three PGA. And so basically the sum, uh, picture is showing the summary of three cycles. But again, only one carbon is fixed at a time. So it takes six turns of the Kelvin cycle to fix six carbon atoms from the CO2. This requires 12 ATP, 12 NADPH, and the reduction in the reduction step, and the six ATP molecules in the regeneration step. So carbon <clears throat> fixation is really that expensive. And what regenerates in the citric acid cycle? this regeneration step, closed the loop cycles. Citric acid cycle also is a closed loop cycle and it also regenerates something. And that something is oxaloacetate that will become C something, which is the citric acid. So this uh, briefly, let's go over the summary of the carbon cycle. Light independent reaction, but need ATP and NADP. H from light dependent reactions. It fixes carbon to ribulose bisphosphate. It reduces uh, three PGA to G3P using the energies and the reducing potential. Regeneration, ribulose bisphosphate is regenerated again in order to fix more carbon, one molecule at a time. So the six turns of Kelvin cycle is needed to produce one glucose molecule. Um, and the, here's a, sub, a diagram that summarizes it, basically. Here's the light, water, becomes oxygen, produce NADPH and ATP. Carbon is affixed to ribulose bisphosphate and goes through the cycle to produce G3P that will be converted into the sugar. And this occurs in the stroma. Uh, some <clears throat> adaptations to conditions in, des in a desert. Plants in a dry climate has adaptations that conserve water. And two adaptations in such plants are more efficient use of the C2, CO2 in short supply. They keep their stomata closed. And uh, some actually run Kelvin cycle only at night to conserve water. And this allows plants to carry out low levels of photosynthesis 
without having to open the stomata at all. Uh, how does um, photosynthesis occur in prokaryotes? Prokaryotes like cyanobacteria lack membrane-bound organelles. So what they have are these membrane folds. We call thylakoids. These are folds of membrane. And these spaces are functioning as stroma. Or, uh, uh, yeah. So, yeah, it uses enfoldings of plasma membrane for chlorophyll attachment and photosynthesis. Let's briefly mention something about energy flow. All living things access energy by breaking down the car uh, carbohydrate molecules. Plants also carry out respiration using mitochondria. How do plants survive at night when it doesn't do any uh, photosynthesis, respiration? So it takes CO2 and produce uh, sugar during photosynthesis, but then it takes its own sugar and breaks it down to produce energy. Photosynthesis produces oxygen by as a byproduct, whereas respiration produces carbon dioxide as a byproduct. Every single atom of the matter in this process is conserved, recycling indefinitely. Matter is energy. Matter converts to energy, which cannot be destroyed or created when it's transformed. Um, cycle of byproducts. Photosynthesis absorbs energy to build carbohydrates in chloroplast. Aerobic cellular respiration releases energy by using oxygen to break down the carbohydrates. Both organelles, uh, mitochondria and uh, chloroplast, use electron transport chain to generate the energy necessary to drive other reactions. So basically, photosynthesis and cellular res respiration function in is is in a are in a biological science a cycle, allowing the organisms to access life sustaining energy that originates from millions of miles away in a star. Okay, we'll uh, leave it there.